So I just want to have a count of how many videos we start with so. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag natural. Oh. So last time we spoke about uh, code on HTTP 203, we looked at tree shaking, uh, yeah. like pipeline operator, the bind operator, like really future facing stuff. But I thought this time we'll go and look at something that's been there forever or for a long time and how a feature has sort of developed over time. This. Now, that's a for loop. Well done. You're still good at quizzes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> One point for me. So I wanted to talk about how for loops actually work under the hood. Right. You say actually as if there was like a big twist to the story. Wow. Here's how it goes. So this bit runs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like like for loop has like three instructions, like the in yeah. the initializer, the condition, and the incrementer or whatever. Or sure. The, 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 yeah. yeah. Iterations. They're, they're just expressions. So, three expressions, yeah. so this one runs, then this one runs, and then the body runs, and then this one runs. And then this one runs, and then the body runs, and then this one runs, and this one runs, and the body runs, and this one runs, and this one. And it only stops if this bit evaluates to like something falsy. Mm -hmm. And that is how for loops work. <laughs> but it has gotten more complicated in the past. I was about few to say years. I haven't learned anything today. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, that was all correct. It is just that like for loops yeah. were really, really simple. I mean, they have been in the oldest programming language in exactly this format with this, these three statements that get evaluated in that specific order over and over. Let's have a look at this. What is going to be logged in, in this piece of code? What we have in here, which is kind of hidden, is a closure, right? So yes. we're yes, passing so a closure to set time and saying, execute this closure in some amount of time. This time. Apparently, it's zero milliseconds, I think. It, it would default to zero. The browser will add a padding four, to it yeah. for 15. Mm -hmm. The browser is allowed to do whatever. So, um, but it, but it, the, the key is that this is going to happen asynchronously after yeah. the for loop is completed. So it will close over the i variable, mm -hmm. which in this case is a primitive value. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the value will be captured. So this would mean that um, we will see three logs, 0, 1, and 2. Not quite. There is only one i in this story. Interesting. And that's going to be scoped to the parent function or the global scope if there's no parent function. Oh, right. Yeah. So when we, when we increment it, uh, it increments it, it again. It will be at when the closure is being executed. So that's actually when it looks up the value. Exactly. I see. So we're going to get console log of 2 twice. Three times. Twice. For <laughs> loops. <laughs> we, we, we're professional developers. I, I had to I, stare at that as well. It's like, I ran this code earlier. I, I, but maybe, I don't know. I uh, just lost all my credibility. <laughs> it's OK. You've got time to regain it. Here we go. Uh, um, but dun, dun, dun. OK. Things have changed. So, so intuitively, mm. I would think and hope that it wouldn't change anything. But I'm guessing you set this up in a way that it actually does. Things have changed. So I mean, you actually, I think you hinted at it because you said that previously the i was declared as a var, meaning it is being declared within the function scope, which if there's nothing outside of this, this would be the global scope. Yes. So like, let's, take a, let's take a look at this. So, so what we have here is uh, like an if true. So this block is always going to run. Mm -hmm. And we're declaring in there, like we've got a var, a const and a let, mm -hmm. uh, sort of logging yeah. them all out. The var is, is scoped to the parent function, or yeah. the global scope, uh, whereas const and let are, I think the term is lexically scoped. To the block. To the block. Mm -hmm. Right. So what happens here with these console logs? Th this first one works. It will log one. Yeah. But what we hit here with this console log in a const uh, and in a let is that's going to throw. Yeah. Because it has no access to those. They are scoped within there. And like you say, this, it's all blocks. and um, some, a lot of developers don't seem to know this, but yeah, you can just have a bare yeah. block like that. I actually find that really useful. It just can be. I have used it since const and let. I have used that every now and then to just declare that this variable is just needed for these three, inst three instructions. And yes. Then Especially if you've got like a, a, a global, if you're doing some inline script in a script yeah. tag, I just wrap it in, in these to make sure or that you want to shadow something just for a specific number of lines. Exactly right? that. Yes, that's what I've used it for. So 
back to this example. So, you, so you're saying same as var? Is that so now that we have caught up on that, the mm. question now is, um, the let is technically, like, I want to say geographically, the let is outside of the block. Yeah. But is it, though? But because is it, Because it, it is a for statement. So I, I actually, my, my intuition would still be it should work the same. But I would also understand if it didn't. But I don't know what the answer is. The ECMAScript spec actually special cases this. OK. Uh, this situation. So I agree with you, like geographically, this, this let statement looks like it's outside the block of the for, but it does magic tricks. Oh and boy. this is where like for loops are just like, oh, this, this thing that was really simple before is now actually really complicated. So what you'll actually get here is a console log of 0 and 1. Interesting. It creates a lexical scope okay. for each iteration. So it's literally a new i. It's not just the same variable assigned a new value. It's a new variable. It is Yes, it is a new variable. Wow. And there's a lot of trickery in here. And, and this, this exposes some interesting behaviors I'd never really thought about before, about how for loops suspect. And one of them is like, so this plus plus at the end, the incrementer, I always thought of that as being at the end of a for loop iteration. Like, okay. so, you know, do this, do this, do that, and then. Well, that wouldn't work if it's a new variable, right? Well, this well, is. I guess it could. Well, but because this logs 0 rather yep. than 1, yep. we know that this is not happening as part of that same iteration. And what actually happens is this. Well, it could be, could be just after the body, right? It could be still. Well, no, because then this is a closure. So this is being logged. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so this is, this is the weird thing. It's like it, it, it exposes that the incrementer runs at the start of every iteration except the first one. <laughs> I know, right? This is. Throw all the elegance out of the window. <laughs> so the way the way it actually works, um, well, actually, let's let's introduce like a, a, an extra thing. <laughs> <laughs> so now the question is, mm. does it copy like the end the value at the end of the body in to the first value of the next iteration and then apply the? Yeah, I think you've got your credibility back because that is exactly what it does. Ooh, yes. I, I mean, it would have to because. It, if you go back to var lands, it would behave do... like that. Yeah. You can alter the, the value of yeah. i within. Yeah, so what happens is it it does this like bit, this special bit that it treats as a declaration. Yeah. Um, it records all of the things that are set. It sort of has some bookkeeping there of like really? so in this case okay. it's like i, just i. But you could declare <laughs> many. Um, it runs its its check mm -hmm. here. Cool. And then it uh, well it, so it actually creates a new lexical environment before it runs this check. And it copies the value of i into it. Because that check can actually be side effect right? It can, can be, be side It can be all kind of stupid things. It can all be side effect which is the amazing thing. Um, so then it runs the body in that same lexical environment that we, we did this bit. So we, we've got our set timeout. We're logging. So at this point, i is 0. Mm -hmm. We're queuing our task. Then we're doing i++. So this is where we're mutating i to be 1. Yeah. And then that's the end of that lexical environment, because it, it then creates a new lexical environment to do the next iteration, mm -hmm. which begins with this. And yes, you're right. It copies the value from one into the other. For every everything listed in this section, it copies the value. So now it's so taking i, which is 1, into the new lexical environment. We do our plus plus on it. Mm -hmm. i is now 2. We do our check. It is not less than 2. So and you, we get a log of 1. And we get a log of 1. Even though we one. incremented after scheduling the task. Yes, because it's it's still pointing at yeah. that instance of one that we So just for the record, for the people at home, don't. No. <laughs> that is, like, if you have to know these intricacies, if your code, code relies on these intricacies, most likely it's a bad idea, right? Well, like, well I would say that this is actually pretty intuitive, because as you say, it works a lot like VAR did. But it's doing so many, like, jumping over yeah. hoops. Yeah, I mean, the, I would have said the same thing about VAR. If you rely on, I mean, this is kind of, out of order then, right? Like you do things to a variable that's already been used beforehand. You rely oh, yeah. on the value. These things, while possible, sh if put, sh don't use them if you, any way to avoid it. Yeah, if you can use it. async await rather than something yeah. like this, your, your code's a lot more sensible. But yeah, so the, the copying between stuff only happens with things declared there. So if you have sort of you know another variable in there, mm -hmm. it is not copying that between the yeah. executing context because it's not one of the ones declared. Okay, it's got this special sense. thing. Uh, where it deals with that. So does const behave any different? Well, so if you, you can actually put 
const there. Yeah, I know. But then it will fail as soon as this happens. Oh, really? Well, but well, it's constant. You can't reassign to it. I mean, if it's a new variable every time, by the way. Well, no, because it, it creates the new variable, and then you are executing this. So that's when the mutation happens. OK. So it is, it is odd that it, the spec does sort of allow that to happen, but it will only ever work. I mean, it could still be a valid for loop if you have no code in your exactly. incrementer bit, right? So the spec still has to deal with it. <sighs> um, so final one. If you format your code like <laughs> this, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> Uh, the reason is because I'm going to do this. <laughs> Why? So what? Okay. So I'm jumping through some hoops here. All I'm doing is I'm assigning zero to i, uh, but I'm just using the statement so I can stuff like a set. Time oh, I miscounted the code. parentheses. I was like, wait, you're storing the timeout ID in i, but it's not. No, you there's actually... a lot of parentheses. So this going is another thing that people not necessarily know that you can, if you want to concatenate commands in JavaScript, you can use and and. Mm -hmm. You can use a semicolon, and you can use a comma. Mm. They all have slightly different meanings in how they concatenate and when they abort to concatenate. But yeah, that's why I, I could have used and and here. I didn't think about that. But yeah. just yes. just calling yeah. out. So this is not this is not a function parameter comma comma. This is a concatenating two individual expressions comma. Yes, because I can't I can't use semicolon because yeah. that's part of the for loop stuff. I mean, you could have right. used an anonymous function that you immediately evaluate. Huh. <laughs> Look, I would have to make the font even smaller <laughs> to do that. <laughs> so I, you know, you, you've talked around some of the problem. <laughs> so my question is, what, what, what is going to be logged here? So I've got the, my I++ here. You've got your I++ there. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? I just want to leave. I, do you know what? I, and then, you know, I didn't know this until I looked at the spec. Because okay, I, I wanted to talk about the complication behind a for loop, and I only discovered this particular thing. So this what one. I what I kind of assume is that this parentheses expressions, which is the set timeout and the return zero in mm -hmm. a way, um, that is being assigned to i once at the start, right? But this but this i is it's going so this this call here is so going wait, to be referring your, what, to what, this. You just asked me what do I think? What is the actual question? Like the for loop should the body should should run once, right? It, it, the question comes down to which lexical scope is this code going to be running in? Uh, like we sort of said there are many within a for loop. But mm -hmm. um, so what possible mutations are going to happen to i before this code runs? Because this, this for loop is going to run to completion. I mean, this is a task. This will run after the for loop is done because Absolutely. for loop is synchronous. So technically, you said this i++ is creating a new lexical scope. But does it mean it's referring to a different variable now or not? I'm having so much fun. I'm going to say it logs a 1. Logs a 1. And that is what I would have said as well. But it is not correct. No, <laughs> no I seriously. I, they, so, so here's the weird thing. It creates an additional lexical scope for this initial statement of a for loop. OK. So it, it creates a lexical scope, runs this line. Mm -hmm. And once it's run that, it goes, well, what are the values of everything declared? And then it copies them into a new lexical scope oh boy. to do okay. the rest of the for loop, to do this and then So it will log a 0. Because it never hits any of these mutation points. Uh, and I, it's really weird. So you get so many lexical scopes in just a simple for loop. So basically, what we're saying is don't use for loops. Is yeah. that our general advice? No, use, use for of. <laughs> <laughs> so much simpler. That's the story. You don't have to worry about any of this. It's just true. use iterators and for of. So I've essentially just wasted everyone's time. Well done. Welcome to HTTP 203. We're back. Maybe we should be one of those podcasts that has a little like jingle between. Yeah, we bits. need transition da, da, jingles. Da, 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 da. Welcome back, listeners. We were talking about lasers, but we're now going to pick up on. Today we are sponsored by else. Google Micro Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by Google Chrome again. Oh. <laughs> Please do it. Download sounds... Chrome, everyone. 